Hello, I'm Andrea Douglas and today I'm here with Charmaine Gittleson, Andrew Cuthbertson and Andrew Nash and we held our annual briefing to R&D analysts which we do every year and we heard about our 2016 year. Can I start Andrew by asking you some of the highlights we communicated to the analysts? The briefing we give at this time of the year to analysts and, and major shareholders is important to us. It, I always feel it's a bit like a three hour oral exam that we have to get through and I, I think this year we did quite well. Some of the things we told them about were first of all five new product launches in the last 12 months plus the licensure of our ISO low process in our major facilities so that's very powerful news. So they included things like the registration of Idelvion um, in the US, Europe, Japan, the registration of Afstilla in the US um, and registration of our flu vaccines, the Afluria QIV, uh, Fluad TIV and Flucelvax QIV in, in major regulatory jurisdictions. So that's, that's really for us as you know probably the most important things that we, we do. We also reported on significant clinical trial progress, um, things like the CSL 112 Phase 2B recruited and completed, CSL 830, the Phase 3 program uh, completed, and Hyzentra CIDP Phase 3 program, which has been a very tough, long program for us, fully recruited and the trial completed. And then finally, we did report on the fact that we'd been able to strengthen the portfolio in the last 12 months with things like CSL uh, 842, the C1 esterase inhibitor, going straight into phase three for a renal transplant rejection indication. And as Andrew Nash reported on, two novel recombinant monoclonal antibodies going into first in human clinical testing. So I think a really tangible series of announcements and achievements um, and great outcomes for patients from R&D in the last 12 months. Andrew, you mentioned our research portfolio. One of our strategic objectives is around pursuing new opportunities. Andrew Nash, can you give us some insight into our research portfolio? We talked about what we think is a really strong early stage portfolio. We have some really exciting, innovating uh, new projects in each of our areas of business. Most excitingly for us this year, we've had two of our uh, monoclonal antibodies uh, move from uh, preclinical development through into clinical studies. Great, and can you tell us about one of those antibodies? Uh, yes, look, um, CSL 324, we've been working on for a number of years now. Uh, it targets uh, what is known as the GCSF receptor and really controls the production of a white blood cell population called neutrophils. These cells are very important in acute and chronic inflammation and we think that you know, this, this uh, new drug may represent a way to treat those diseases. Right, and we've just moved into phase one That's study? That's right, so a phase one study in healthy volunteers here in Melbourne. Our first strategic objective relates to new product launches. Charmaine, can you tell us about some of the clinical development programs for our immunoglobulin portfolio and our specialty products portfolio? It's been a, a good year for those two franchises. I'll start with the immunoglobulins and the, the highlight there is that we completed the PATH study. That's a study with Hyzentra, our subcutaneous immunoglobulin, treating patients with chronic inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy, or CIDP debilitating disease for patients where they lose motor control and sensation in their limbs. Uh, this was a really challenging study for us to do. It took us over five years. It was global um, across 16 countries and 69 sites and it really was a reflection of the collaboration between R&D and commercial because we had to come together to find these investigators and patients and then to work with the sites so that patients wanted to come onto the study. It was a challenging study where patients had to withdraw from their current therapy. So patients currently are treated with intravenous immunoglobulin and our own Privagen is one of those products that is used very successfully. But they had to come off it and demonstrate that they really needed IVIG before we could randomise them into the study and it's a big ask to ask patients to do that. So I'm pleased to announce that that study completed is successful and we're moving towards filing it next year and the plus for patients is that they can use the subcutaneous immunoglobulin and administer it at home and for a patient who has limited mobility that's a very big deal. The other 
program you asked me about was uh, CSL830. Again, here, yeah, really exciting, great data that we had released. This is our subcutaneous formulation of Berenert that is used to treat hereditary angioedema. So these are patients who are deficient in an enzyme and as a result they swell and they get a collection of fluid or edema in areas such as the face, the larynx, their hands, their abdomen and if it co collects around the larynx and stops them from breathing it's life-threatening and the problem with this disease is that the patients never know when they're going to get an attack. Very unpredictable. This study we recruited very quickly. Patients were very eager to come into the program and we saw wonderful data. We did two doses in the study and we saw that our 60 microgram per kilogram dose was very successful, reducing the attack rate in patients by up to 96%. And the reports that from back from patients are that they felt normal. For the first time in their lives, they felt normal. So that product has also been filed uh, to the US and next year to the EU and we look forward to that being launched. Excellent. Sounds like a new paradigm in, in treatment for HAE. It will be. Certainly some huge developments in terms of our strategic objective of new product launches. Andrew, just returning to the briefing, can you tell us a little bit about the commitments we made to, to our investors in terms of what we'll be achieving in the next year? Yes, well one of the features of the briefing, Andrea, as you well know, is we do forecast the big stage gates we're going to go through in the next 12 months months, so in 2017. Some of the things we committed to with our investors were in terms of licensing new products, um, licensing Afstilla in Europe, licensing Afstilla in Japan, licensing Privigen uh, CIDP in the US, licensing Heygarda, the CSL830 in the US, Kcentra in Japan, and three flu QIV programs through to licensure. So, so a really big group of licenses coming through in the next 12 months. We also committed to filing three big uh, programs with regulatory agencies. First of all, as Charmaine said, filing the Hyzentra CIDP BLA in the US, filing CSL 830 uh, called Hagada in the US, different name in Europe, that filing in Europe. And then of course the CSL 112 phase 3 go no go decision will make that decision around the middle of the year, second half of the year, and we are committed to trying to start that study, assuming it's a go decision, around the end of next year, early the following year. And then as Andrew mentioned, we're also really excited to start our third recombinant antibody program, our anti-VEGFB monoclonal antibody into the clinic so that we will have three recombinant antibodies um, from An Andrew's research team actually in first in human clinical testing, plus an Ig mimetic that we mentioned in pre-clinical development. So a really big uh, next 12 months for R&D. Thank you, Andrew. Yes, certainly sounds like a busy year for, for all of R&D next year. So thank you to all of you, to Charmaine, Andrew Cuthbertson and Andrew Nash, and we certainly look forward to coming back next year and, and hearing about all of those achievements. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks.